Hey everyone, Walter Haydock here, founder and CEO of StackAware. Today, we are going to talk to you about AI as a service security. So when I say AI as a service, I'm primarily talking about software as a service or potentially some platform as a service offerings that give you access to generative or predictive AI systems. Some examples would be OpenAI, Anthropic, they offer API and user interface access for their artificial intelligence models. And I'm gonna break down three levels of architecture or framework that you should consider when you're interacting with these models to protect your sensitive data and stay compliant with any regulations or other frameworks you might be subject to. So we're gonna start with level one. And in this situation, you're just sending a user prompt and a system prompt to the model. Now, in the form of the OpenAI API, uh, you can send both of these things. And by default, your data will be retained for 30 days, uh, barring a legal hold. Now, certain use cases can get access to zero data retention, and that means your prompts and responses are not stored at all. It's all done in stride, and uh, there's no retention whatsoever. So that's probably the most secure option, although it does require a qualifying use case in order to get that feature. Another thing you should think about is, is the system training on your data? So again, using OpenAI as an example, they do not train on inputs to the API. Um, interestingly, if you look at Anthropic, uh, they will not train on your inputs either unless you flag one of their trust and safety classifiers. In that case, they will retain the data and they do reserve the right to train on it. So that's a limited set of circumstances, but uh, there are some exceptions there. And basically any company, if they get a legally binding order to hold on to data, they're gonna have to do it. So keep that in mind. All right, moving down to level two, I'm gonna talk about retrieval augmented generation. So this is using a generative AI model in combination with some sort of grounding data. So this allows you to be more accurate with your responses and you can force the model to refer to information in a uh, certain knowledge base when it's providing responses. It's not a surefire way to avoid hallucinations or incorrect responses, but it can improve the accuracy and it can uh, allow you to keep the information up to date when you're providing those responses instead of just relying on the training data. So two key things to think about in this case are one, where is the grounding data stored? Using the OpenAI example, they have a, a, a feature called assistance where you can store the grounding data with OpenAI. They'll keep it on their servers. Now that can, that's convenient and that's something that we at Stackware do um, almost exclusively with our public content. Um, all of our blog articles, things like that. We have an assistant that automatically uh, grabs that data and uh, makes it available for, for, for querying. But it is stored with OpenAI, it is stored with a third party, so that's something to keep in mind, and they will uh, hold on to that data until you affirmatively delete it. So keep that in mind. Another consideration when doing retrieval augmented generation is whether the security policy is neutral or not. And by this, I mean, are you relying on the model itself to make decisions about what information to give people? If so, don't do that. That's not a good way to uh, secure your system. I'll give you an example here. If you have a customer facing chat bot, you wouldn't want the model to uh, have to determine whether the customer is who he says he is. You'd want to use some other authentication process, uh, you know, a, a traditional password plus two factor authentication approach, um, some other way of determining who the user is before you make data available to that user uh, for processing via RAG. All right, so that wraps up level two. To go to level three, we'll talk about fine tuning. So OpenAI, uh, AWS Bedrock, they all allow you to fine tune their proprietary models or proprietary models that they host on their systems. And this can improve the uh, 
the predictability of the responses. If you want the responses to refer to specific information, you'll probably want to do RAG. Fine tuning allows you to ensure a consistent format or a consistent uh, tone of voice in the responses. And you can also combine these two options. So keep that in mind. When you're doing fine tuning of AI as a service models, you want to consider how long these models are retained uh, by the provider. Almost none of them that I have surveyed will do any sort of training on your data uh, of the base model. They'll only train the fine tuned model. But again, if the model is fine tuned on sensitive data, be aware that that model will be sitting on someone else's servers. That's not necessarily wrong. Uh, it's just important to understand how long that model will be kept after uh, you delete it uh, or if it's gonna be auto deleted. So make sure you understand how long the provider is going to hang on to your fine tuned model in addition to uh, you know, the training data or fine tuning data for it and any data that's used for grounding. All three levels of AI as a service usage um, all these levels, if you're, if you're doing any of these, all these considerations stack on top of each other. So uh, th as things get more complex, so do the security and compliance considerations. If you are interested in learning more about how to securely architect your AI systems, then I would strongly recommend our email course, which is available at ai-risk.management. Yes, the actual top level domain is management uh, and I'll also put a link in the comments or the description for this video. Thanks a lot for watching.